What I am, family. It's your boy, SCN TV. Back at y'all with another International Steppers. And this episode is going to be about none other than Felix Mitchell, a.k.a. Felix the Cat. Right along in here, I need just a little bit more room, please. Just, more room. just when the East Bay thought one of its most notorious hoods was gone forever, he came back to star in a funeral production fit for a king. Alas, it was his own. 32-year-old convicted drug racketeer Felix Mitchell was stabbed to death last week in his cell at Leavenworth. Mitchell was convicted in San Francisco federal court earlier this year after allegations that he was the kingpin in an East Oakland heroin dealership that featured fancy cars, flashy parties, and murders. Murders including victims who had nothing to do with Mitchell's mob, innocent people who were killed merely by accident. <laughs> Felix Mitchell was born August 23rd, 1954, in Oakland, California. Coming up in the segregation era was kind of different, as he would come up with the likes of Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and his good friend Huey P. Newton, who was the leader and co-founder of the revolutionary organization of Black Panther Party. They were actually good friends, and Felix actually served under Huey P. Newton in the Black Panther Party which was also started in Oakland and founded by Huey P. Newton, Bobby Seale, and Elbert Howard. Felix Mitchell was raised in the San Antonio Housing Projects or 69th Village, or as some like to call it, The Ville, which has since then been knocked down and converted into Lion Creek Crossings. It is in the village where Felix came up with the name, the 6ix9ine Mob, or The Mob. Felix grew up poor in the 69th Village Projects, and he decided at a very young age that he wasn't gonna live in this condition for the rest of his life. He ended up dropping out of high school and jumping head first into the drug trade. Felix Mitchell would use his charismatic personality to network and gain a reliable connect in the heroin trade. Early on, Felix really had no competition because according to the police, he was the one that actually brought heroin to Oakland this is why most people consider him the godfather of Oakland. Mitchell also controlled the Lockwood Gardens housing projects, which was located on 65th and International. This was actually considered the other half of the village. It was also a great location for distribution and sales because it was right by the Oakland Coliseum. The fiends could just come up, get their pack, and be on about their way. The beautiful city of Oakland, known for being the home of one of the most controversial revolutionary parties in history was beginning to decline fast, partially because the drug heroin is very addictive. A lot of families got addicted to heroin very early on, and that was just the beginning. The crack epidemic hadn't fully got in swing yet, so there was more to come. Felix Mitchell had already made more money before the age of 21 than some people may make in a lifetime. But by the age of 26, in the early 1980s, Felix Mitchell was top priority in the streets. He was the one that was shining. He was the one that had the women. He was the one that had the money. Felix Mitchell loved to stunt. He loved jewelry. He loved cars. And he had multiple selections of all of them. But he also had a problem because Mickey Moore of the family and Harvey Wisenson, AKA Big Wiz of Funky Town USA, decided that they wanted to make some money too. Oakland wasn't big enough. So this began a big war for territory. The shooting war in Oakland, a deadly battle for turf between drug dealers, police, and citizens. The dealers shoot first and don't even bother to ask questions later. And now it's just you, they go out and they commit a murder. There is no attempt to collect on the debt anymore. It's, a, it's just a punishment for failure to pay. If you have to duck and dodge bullets, you got people down here with 38s, 45 Uzis. The police would get in tune with Felix Mitchell, Mickey Moore, and Harvey Wisenton in the early 1980s after this war would start. In a three-day span, six bodies would drop. This would immediately attract attention of federal agents, and they would begin to investigate all of these gangs. After about four and a half years of investigating Felix Mitchell, the feds would finally swoop down in the year 1985. He would be arrested on drug charges and tax evasion. He would go to court and the feds would convict him. 
he will receive a life sentence. He will be sent to Leavenworth Federal Prison in Leavenworth, Kansas. While at Leavenworth, Felix Mitchell will become more familiar with big time guys from different cities. They will begin to hang with each other. There was also an older guy around 70 years old that was hanging around them too. This older guy would borrow some commissary from Felix Mitchell and he was told to pay it back at a certain time. On August 21st, 1986, this older guy's time was up. He didn't pay the commissary back in time and some guys that were very familiar with Felix Mitchell took it upon themselves to hold this older guy over the balcony at Leavenworth. They were going to drop him until Felix Mitchell intervened and told him that it wasn't that serious. After the altercation, the old man left. Felix Mitchell's guys went to the weight room and Felix Mitchell went back to his cell to retire for a nap. 30 minutes after the incident, the old guy would come to Felix Mitchell's room while he was sleeping with a razor and cut Felix Mitchell's throat. Felix Mitchell would die. Meanwhile, the man authorities believe was behind a decade of bloody Oakland drug wars and killings was buried today, and police hope his passing is going to bring to an end an era of brutality in Oakland's turbulent history. But even in the end, this funeral today was flashy and controversial, and the city really couldn't do anything about it. Channel 7's Ed Leslie has details for us. Right along in here, I need just a little bit more room, please. Just, a more room. just when the East Bay thought one of its most notorious hoods was gone forever, he came back to star in a funeral production fit for a king. Alas, it was his own. 32-year-old convicted drug racketeer Felix Mitchell was stabbed to death last week in his cell at Leavenworth. Mitchell was convicted in San Francisco federal court earlier this year after allegations that he was the kingpin in an East Oakland heroin dealership that featured fancy cars, flashy parties, and murders. Murders including victims who had nothing to do with Mitchell's mob, innocent people who were killed merely by accident. His neighborhood, however, was divided today on whether Felix Mitchell was a hero or a villain. The family has a right to a private film. I don't think they have a right to force this kind of thing on the community in Oakland, and I'm very upset about it. Felix dealt in drugs over here in the village for years. He used young kids to deal with drugs. I don't think any of us here want our kids to be uh, brought up that way. And I think this is a good example of what happens when you deal with drugs. You put some jobs here, maybe we won't have this on the streets of Oakland. Go That's ahead. what it takes. Okay, so you job, understand? I know what he done. He was a good man. And we need to tell the city officials that if they get the jobs out there, then maybe it wouldn't be so much drugs in Oakland. There were others interested in the garish parade that made its way right down San Pablo Avenue, tying up traffic and amazing onlookers. And they were the detectives who helped send Mitchell to prison. They were looking for Mitchell's possible successor, and their somewhat ostensible vantage point was Mitchell's favorite red Ferrari, seized by the government under a new law. At the church, hundreds of people were turned away from the sellout funeral, but many were lucky enough to get souvenir programs. Others just watched, quietly wondering how to explain all this to their children. The services were strictly private as family and friends said their last goodbyes to Felix Mitchell, now at last a victim himself. In Oakland, Ed Leslie, Channel 7 News. Well, those pictures that police were taking there are going to be gone over very closely to see if anybody was there who should not have been there and maybe help them focus in on trying to find out who's going to try to power their way down the same path that Mitchell did. Felix Mitchell would have one of the biggest funerals in Oakland history. There was a lot of people that loved Felix Mitchell to death and there was a lot of people that hated Felix Mitchell the same. His funeral was huge and he was carried by horse and carriage from San Antonio Village to the Star Bethel Baptist Church on Stanford and San Pablo. A lot of the community was upset because the funeral was so big and there were so many people. There was a lot of important people that actually attended Felix Mitchell's funeral. One of those people being Huey P. Newton. Well, there was a most unusual funeral in Oakland, California today, the funeral of a convicted drug dealer. ABC's Ken Kashiwahara was there. Friends and relatives, Rolls Royces and limousines. It was a funeral fit for a king. 32-year-old Felix Mitchell was a king, a convicted drug kingpin who once ruled these very streets of Oakland, who police say was responsible for turning thousands of residents into drug addicts. 
Mitchell was stabbed to death at the federal penitentiary in Kansas, and Mitchell's family planned today's elaborate send-off for a man who lived an elaborate lifestyle. Some residents and city officials were outraged, saying it could send the wrong message to the city's youth. But I hope the message is loud and clear, saying, stay away from drugs, this is what happened to you. If you take drugs, this is what happened if you deal with drugs. City officials said that all the proper permits were filed, that there was nothing they could do to stop the funeral. All they can do now, they say, is hope the people remember the violent end of a drug dealer's life and not the flash and glamour. Ken Gashwahara, ABC News. In a city that's been battling to stop the sale of drugs in its parks and schoolyards, the glorification of a pusher became the center of a controversy. There were many, including city officials, who thought the funeral should not be allowed. But the city council and the police were powerless to stop it. I think it's a disgrace to society. They didn't do this for Martin Luther King. The man being given the hero's farewell was Felix Mitchell. He was stabbed to death in Leavenworth Penitentiary last week, one year into a life sentence for conspiracy to sell heroin. Among those who disapproved of Mitchell's showy funeral were some who hoped at least his death would provide proof that crime doesn't pay. But on the streets, they feared the message would be different. This is great. This is great. I mean, I hope I have a funeral like this. A small-time criminal proved he could get very rich pushing drugs in one poor neighborhood. In the campaign against drugs, Mitchell's funeral was an advertisement for the other side. And he was a hero in my eyes. John Blackstone, CBS News, Oakland. Felix Mitchell was faced with the same dilemma that mostly all of us are faced with that come from the urban community. What's that dilemma? Poverty. So when one picks up drugs, or one picks up guns to try to get their self out of poverty, whether it's right or wrong, I can't say, but it's real. And I think that what we can learn from the story of Felix Mitchell is this. Every coin has two sides. Life is based on duality, up, down, he, she. With that being said, for every drug dealer that's out here shining, stunting, riding good, and eating good, there's a hundred fiends who's addicted to their product, whose kids don't know where their next meal is gonna come from, whose kids have to go to school with dirty clothes and busted up shoes, whose kids have to depend on free lunch or they may not eat. Some will love you because what you can do for them. But at the end, most will hate you. Also, everybody has a position to play. And just because you have a position to play and you may be good at your position, don't mean that you should overdo or overplay your position. What do I mean by that? Maybe if Felix Mitchell's goons would have never hung that old man over that balcony, Felix Mitchell may still be alive today. But they did, and he ended up getting killed. Everybody play their position, but not only play your position, play your position the right way. This has been the story of Felix the Cat Mitchell. It's your boy, SNTV.